So again, welcome to our library workshop series, something new we're trying in the library. Uh, various presentations from librarians and other library staff on various topics of interest. And today we have a presentation um, kind of focusing a lot on the various tools we can use and you can use uh, looking at your researcher impact. The formal presentation title is Researcher Impact and Managing Profiles uh, in Google Scholar and more, brought to you by our librarian, uh, Clayton Hayes, who is a subject librarian in our group, and he is the subject librarian for uh, the College of Engineering, um, the Honors College, uh, but also the Kinesiology Department, uh, and the Mathematics Department, and the Urban Studies and Urban Planning Department. Um, so I will now turn the presentation over to Clayton. We don't expect it to fill the hour until there'll be time for questions as well. Yeah, thanks, Monique, and thanks everybody who, uh, who's here now and who perhaps will be joining us uh, by watching the recording in the future. So I don't, I, don't, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Monique kind of covered it. Uh, I've been a librarian here for uh, almost six years now, but before that I was a, uh, I mean, I did a lot of things. I've been at Wayne State for a long time uh, since I started as an undergrad here in 2004. So I've stuck around. Um, so uh, yeah, I was, I was curious. Um, I know some, I, like I recognize some names. Um, if folks wanna like type in the chat, uh, you know, what department or what uh, area of study they're in that might be helpful. Um, I'm just, well, I don't know if it'd be helpful. It's just kind of, I'm curious, I guess, to see uh, what different areas, because some of the things that we're going to be talking about are a little more, are a little more STEM focused, but not entirely. Um, so, okay, environmental engineering. Um, okay, social work. Well, yes, I, I know what Karen does at least. <laughs> um, okay, so this is going to be, uh, I would say, extremely relevant to some people and fairly relevant to others because the, the publications that get picked up by some of these resources uh, differs a little bit depending on your, um, your discipline. But I'm going to start sharing my screen. Uh, there we go. So I might not be able to see the chat as much, but but yeah, um, the the topics that I'm going to be covering today, and I actually um, have a PDF that I'm going to share with everybody that that hopefully will summarize things pretty well uh, at the end. Uh, I'm going to be looking at two different databases. Um, they are Web of Science. <clears throat> Web of Science and Scopus. Uh, so you may have heard of, of one or either of those. Um, and we're gonna be looking at Google Scholar as well. Um, and then, uh, oh, and then ORCID, which is a kind of a different thing altogether. Um, but if at any point you have any questions, you know, feel free to stop me and, uh, or say something in the chat. I'll, I'll try to check it, but I know that uh, Monique will also uh, stop me if there's uh, anything essential that I'm missing out on. So um, some of these services you can access um, without needing a subscription. So you don't have to be an, a Wayne State affiliate to do so. Um, it was hard for me to find like stable links for any of them. Uh, so, you know, if you'll like, forgive me, I'm gonna operate from the library homepage um, and just kind of, I'm just going to search for them. Uh, they're listed under article databases, but you have to like kind of navigate alphabetically. So I tend to just search for these different things by name. I have direct links to where I'm going to be going uh, in the PDF that I'll be, uh, I guess, passing out at the end of this. So um, Scopus is a good uh, general purpose database. Um, I, I suggest it a lot for a wide range of disciplines. You can kind of see the list here. Um, it, it, it runs the gamut more or less. Um, and the, uh, 
The thing that we're interested in is the author search that they have. So I guess to kind of preface this a little bit, um, two of the biggest names in citation tracking and um, in tracking citation metrics are Scopus and Web of Knowledge or Web of Science or whatever it's calling itself these days. Um, they are, uh, you know, they are uh, abstracting and indexing databases in their own right, but at the same time, they're also um, tracking uh, citations between uh, different articles and, and different uh, resources. And that's kind of like one of the main benefits of them. So um, what I thought might be interesting is that because I had some names ahead of time, I, I looked up some people to see what sort of uh, um, profiles would come up. So uh, I actually think that this, uh, I didn't see this person join us, but I'm gonna use them, or actually no, I'll do, I'll do uh, Sharon first. I just kind of searched everybody to see, it was a small enough list. Um, that it wasn't too difficult to search everybody to kind of see who would be a good example for what. So you just enter last name, first name, uh, you can add an affiliation, uh, Wayne State University, but I'm not going to bother because I know um, the, the number of Sharon Leans that pop up is pretty limited. In fact, there's just the one that pops up in Scopus, which is good, which is what you want. You want to be the only Sharon that, that, that shows up, right? Yes. It, it's a my name, if I were to search for it, is also unique enough that I don't think there are too many. So, you know, what you can do is you can look at the list of citations that um, Scopus is affiliating with you. I see you do already have an ORCID, so you're ahead of the game on that. Um, and, you know, you want to make sure it's, it's up to date. You want to make sure it has um, all the articles or resources that you might have. Um, uh, published. And so you can see above Sharon's name, though, that this is an author profile generated by Scopus. So I'm guessing, Sharon, you've never gone into Scopus and like set up your own profile. Is that correct? Uh, I've been in a number of sites. I thought that I maybe had for Scopus or maybe linked it to the ORCID, mm -hmm. but it never shows all of my um, publications and right. you know I, I have that's why I'm here today to figure out how to how to get books to show up how to get oh. can you know uh, <laughs> how to get uh, all the articles to show up <laughs> well and that is one of the issues with Scopus and with Web of Science is that they are pulling from a kind of predetermined pool of citations and so that there might not be a way for, okay, for these. So at least I'm not doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it might feel like you are, but because the, like, uh, the only, uh, well, so let me look at a different example and we'll see what I, um, what one of the issue cases might be. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't think this was, this was one of the names that didn't, uh, that hasn't shown up, but I did search ahead of time. So um, we had somebody register who, uh, Chun Ying, maybe that they, they might be watching in the future and I'm surprised that we're using their name. But um, because this is uh, perhaps not as, not as unique of a name, we're getting a lot of different results. Mm -hmm. um, and the issue comes up when, uh, if you've ever published under or enlisted as an author under multiple names, um, so if you've you know used a middle initial sometimes and not other times, or if you've changed institutions, for example, if you published uh, while affiliated with one and then published again while affiliated with another, um, you can you can have multiple author pro profiles showing up in Scopus. So without uh, Chen Ying here to tell us which of these might be theirs, uh, we don't know. But if you were to find multiple profiles that you believe are yours, you can you know, select them and then request to merge those authors together. So this is you saying, um, I have identified these profiles as being the same individual 
I want them to be merged into a single profile so it will count uh, more of the publications in a single space. I mean, this is something that I have done multiple times for faculty here at Wayne State just because I come across it um, and I've noticed, but uh, you know, as publications continue to come out, um, the issue might crop up again. So it's something that you have to check on a regular basis. I think that registering for an ORCID, which we'll talk about a little bit later, is a good step um, because it's a unique number uh, affiliated with you as a researcher, but some publications don't give you an option of, uh, you know, adding an ORCID number to that publication. And so it's not a surefire way, unfortunately. Um, let me go back, search again. Um, so Chong, you said you, you're a, a recent postdoc here. Uh, and so let's see. Okay, so, so another, uh, Another name that uh, isn't unique enough for Scopus to, to narrow you down to a single person. Uh, so there's a lot of a lot of different Shang Jin. I mean, Strong Ying. His first name and last name is wrong. Yeah, just switch it. First name and last name. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was confused by it. so it should be. Oh, and of course that's the way it's listed here on your. Oh, and that's how I have it written on my. Right, yeah. I wrote, I wrote notes and I wrote it correctly, at least. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. No problem. Okay, but now there's more. <laughs> um, so uh, you can you can look at uh, institutional affiliations on the left-hand side here. So I don't know, depending on how many other researchers that are out there with a similar name, um, it can be pretty difficult sometimes. Um, and I've noticed, you know, especially with um, non-Western names, I guess, the, these databases have, have quite a bit of trouble. Um, and so uh, you'd wanna look through and try to identify uh, whatever institutions you may have been affiliated with before coming to Wayne State. Um, but without, I'm not gonna like, I don't wanna sit and, and uh, filter through all of them. Um, but there, I mean, so there's lots of uh, filters to limit to. So you had said you were, you had come from Canada, if I'm not yes, mistaken. Uni University of Canada, University of Calgary, right. University of Calgary. So this looks like you. Right, yeah. Okay. So, um, if there were, in your case, multiple uh, profiles that looked similar, uh, you might want to, uh, you could consider merging them. Uh, you can also kind of take control of the profile. And so if you want to update the affiliation to Wayne State University, you can do that. Um, you do have to create an account, but it looks like you may have done so already. Hmm. Let's see, was there any other? And let's, well, let me see real quick if I search for Jerry, what we end up with. Ah, oh, interesting. So <laughs> I don't know, is, is this you? This is, is this a different Jerry? Uh, no, that is, the first one is not me. Okay. Jerry M, no, not me. Okay. And did you have any document titled Homer Simpson's Eyes and the Culture of Late Nostalgia? Uh, yep. Okay. Okay, hey, so here's an example where we have two profiles for Jerry. So we can request to merge them, which is gonna make me log in if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, of course. Oh, and the, all the cameras are were over the... Um. 
yes, that's my password. Sign in. I don't, I need it when. <laughs> it's not letting me sign in. Where some of these websites have, like, if you don't actually type it in, it won't let you sign in. Um, <sighs> One second. I'm going to sign in in a different window so not everybody sees my uh, password, hopefully. Sorry about this. Oh, come on. Uh, I should have signed in first. That is the moral here. I think I've done it enough. Okay. Um, so, here, I'm going to request it. I will list that I am not the person themselves. I'm requesting it on behalf of somebody else. Um, change the current affiliation with the university, submit requests. Um, so I'll get an email usually when they uh, are done processing the request. And as I, so this is something that I just like will do as I'm, searching through uh, publications by Wayne State authors if I notice it, but there's way too many for me to, uh, to do it for everybody. And I had hoped that, that we'd get somebody where this was the case. Um, obviously, the more you publish, the more likely it is for this to happen. So um, if we instead go to Web of Science. So, I've noticed, I think Scopus is a little bit better um, at collecting multidisciplinary publications. Uh, Web of Science, obviously a little more focused on science, but not entirely. I have seen, there's a fair amount of overlap between the two. Uh, although Web of Science is a little touchier with their author search. It'll yell at you if it doesn't think there's anyone with this name. So, so it's one of the people who are uh, registered but isn't here currently. Um, so we have a profile for someone from the City of Grand Records uh, water system. So this could be um, this individual, I don't know since they're not here, uh, but again, this is an automatically generated uh, author profile that until you go in and claim the record is going to kind of, they're going to do their best job to figure out what these publications are. But, um, you know, it usually takes an actual uh, human intervention a lot of the time to make sure it's working correctly. So we'll try Sharon again. I hope she doesn't mind. Uh, and again, here we have an algorithmically generated author record for Sharon. And I think this is like, this is a very similar number of publications, uh, 15 that we're seeing in Web of Science than we were in Scopus, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so this would be a case, yeah, you wanna go in, claim your record, make sure that it's cleaned up and up to date. Um, and you want to find uh, any other possible authors with a uh, similar name. I'm not 100% sure. Um, so if we look, if we narrow down by place name. Uh, so it, University of Calgary was what I was looking for. 
now. I should just um, a name variant. So, and yeah, I forgot that it's one of the things that I don't like about Web of Science is they don't let you specify um, an affiliation, which is, I don't know, very strange. There we go. University of Calgary. Uh, again, so same thing, algorithmically generated. Um, but yeah, you want to look through. Um, and so it may be uh, the case that, especially if you've come through a number of different institutions, as I kind of mentioned earlier. So, you know, you have your, we have, well, yeah, grad school, um, if you publish anything as an undergrad or anything published with your name affiliated with it. Um, and as, again, as you kind of continue on in your uh, scholarly career and you maybe might move to different institutions, you're gonna see these kind of profiles start to, to stack up. Uh, the uh, algorithms are usually okay at identifying folks, but like I said, uh, any names that are like non-Western tends to have a lot of trouble with that. Middle initials being used or not used. Um, uh, also uh, can trip it up quite a bit. And if we, I searched for, for Jerry Heron and the only one we got was the Jerry M. Heron, which kind of makes sense. It looks like they're, they are more of a medical researcher and we, you know, Web of Science is a more sciencey, it's pulling from more sciencey sources. But yeah, in either of these cases, Scopus and Web of Science, they are, um, they have kind of a fixed bucket of things that they are tracking. Um, they don't, I don't think they actually really tell you what those are. Um, you might be able to, to, if you get down into the weeds uh, of looking at the algorithms, you might be able to figure out um, what exactly they're looking through for connections. But if something isn't in their, uh, their purview, I guess, they're not going to be tracking citations for it. Um, I don't know about getting things, especially like books, added to Scopus or Web of Science. Um, partially because I'm not 100% sure on how the two platforms decide what books are going to be included and what books, books aren't. I would imagine they have arrangements with certain publishers to, uh, to include them and, and not, but it's not something that I've looked into too deeply. I saw, Sharon, did you have a question? I saw your camera pop back on. No, I just turned on to let you know I heard your answer about the books. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm I mean, eating my lunch, so I didn't think you guys would want to experience that. So I keep turning my camera off. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, I kind of assume that a lot of folks are uh, are eating lunch or. I'll drink coffee on camera, but maybe not <laughs> much. You know. <laughs> um, yeah. So those are, and so unfortunately, I'm not as because most of my experiences with the sciences and the uh, social sciences, I'm not as familiar with anything. Uh, in the humanities sector, or um, or you know, and, and I'm more familiar with the sciences than I am with the social sciences. I'm not sure if there are any sort of similar databases that are commonly used for the humanities. I'm wondering uh, if MLA uh, bibliography is like even even close to something like that, but I don't know. I see I see Karen shaking her head. I kind of was peeking in, so. Yeah, not that I know of, but it would probably be something to check out to see. It would make sense that they might. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm willing to bet that the more, uh, that, that we'll see more things like this in the future. I think like the Web of Science and the Scopus author profiles are relatively new. I think the Scopus or the Web of Science one in particular, um, I think it was up until very recently was listed as kind of like a beta feature of Web of Science. So it has very recently been rolled out. Um, but I would imagine that other databases or citation tracking 
services are going to be following in the footsteps of Scopus and Web of Science and rolling out profile features. Um, so it's something that, yeah, we're going to keep an eye on and, and hopefully, um, you know, if, if these sort of things come up, be able to pass that information along. Um, so I'm curious now, how many folks already have uh, a Google Scholar profile? If you know that you have one, like, are, are we able to raise hands in the chat? I don't know. I see, I see a couple of hands going off. Um, yeah, and I mean, so Google Scholar, it's a, I, it is what it is. I think there are plenty of problems with it, but I think it is still a very useful service as well. Um, whereas uh, Scopus and Web of Science tend to underestimate whatever your, you know, whatever real citation count might be out there. Um, Google Scholar tends to overestimate in the other direction. So it feels like, um, but it's, a, I think it's a good balance uh, having the two of them to kind of um, compare to one another. So uh, the nice thing about Google Scholar, if you don't already have an account, I would encourage you to do so just because um, without an account, you, there, there's, Google Scholar doesn't create those author profiles automatically for people. So if you don't have an account with them, there's no way for um, other researchers or other people to see your profile, like the one that I'm showing you, like my profile here, which because I've only actually published two papers is very abbreviated. Um, but this is what I'm talking about. It's overestimated. This is a presentation that I gave to some undergrads um, about the LaTeX type, type setting system. Uh, this was a poster presentation. And this was another uh, presentation that I gave to a group of undergrads. So these aren't the sort of things that you'd really care about being listed in a CV or care about citation counts. Um, and this one citation I've looked into it is like, a, in a, I think another poster presentation. Um, so probably wouldn't count for like proportion and tenure or anything like that. Um, and uh, so that's what I mean when I says it tends to overestimate that it often throws in things that might not, might not necessarily count. Um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, some of my listed citations are duplicates uh, just in other languages um, or, or just straight up duplicates. You can see this first one, uh, Revistas, same thing down here. Um, and I don't think, I don't know that there's a real way to fix that. Did you have a question, Jerry? Yeah, I do, Clayton. You said that until we go into Google Scholar and individually create an account, there's, it doesn't automatically create a profile. I don't words. believe so, unless they've changed that. Okay. So in other words, we would be invisible until we go in and make an account for ourselves, yeah? Yeah, I mean, well, let's see what happens. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Um, like, despite the fact that if we were to search for publications, it would show up. Sorry, I usually do this where we'll zoom in a little bit. Um, so, it's got it. Oh, oh, of course, because I'm searching for profiles, I'm not going to yeah. find it. Um, so, but let's let's see what happens because if we search for uh, Homer Simpson's eyes, uh, so you're listed as an author, obviously, but there's no like, it's not clickable. It's not a clickable profile that you can get in and look at. Got it. Whereas, so this other one that's listed, you know, it's completely unrelated, but you can see that this author here, you could click on their profile and see uh, their information. Yeah, and this won't this won't be created unless you create it yourself. Got it. Okay, thank you. And I think, like for example, if I were to search for one of my publications that I do have indexed in Google Scholar, uh, sometimes it'll list it'll like say 
you know, it, here's a, a profile that you might be looking for. Maybe you just have to search for it. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so if you search in Google Scholar for my name, for example, um, my profile work will come up. And that's just from normal Google Scholar. Um, if you're obviously if you're searching in the, their profile in your face, you're just looking at profiles in that case. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, I find Google Scholar kind of annoying to be completely honest because uh, they send a lot of emails like always saying like, oh, check up on your citations, which for me as a librarian, I, I don't have many of those and I, so it doesn't change very often. Uh, but, you know, if you're publishing more, obviously it's going to be a more, more necessary thing to go in there and check in your, your profiles. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so it's, I think it's interesting that of all the of all the services, it's Google Scholar that doesn't create the profile for you. You'd think that they'd be uh, real into that sort of thing, but um, yeah. And so we had um, some other folks mention, or I well, other folks mentioned. I kind of pointed it out that um, some other folks have uh, an orchid which, oh, have they changed their websites? I should just, I should be looking at the PDF that I made. It's orchid.org, okay. I think the org.id is then like the shortened version. Um, but what essentially this is, is like, um, it's a service that provides unique uh, researcher identifiers. Um, and uh, it is, so I, I do have one, I'll sign in. Um, Wayne States has an uh, institutional subscription to ORCID, although I'm not entirely sure what that means. Uh, it's never been entirely clear to me. I think it what, it, what I've been told is that it means they can do some kind of quality control on people's affiliations, for example. So to kind of make sure that Wayne State University is showing up exactly the same in everybody's profile, stuff like that. Um, but beyond that, I don't know that there's, there's a whole lot that goes in with it. Um, but it's a unique identifier. You can associate it with your profiles and other services like uh, Scopus and Web of Science, I believe have that functionality. Um, I don't believe that Google Scholar does, but I could be wrong. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, some government funding agencies are, either have or will start requiring ORCIDs for applying for funding. Um, and, well, I don't wanna tell anybody incorrect information, but um, I seem to recall being in a meeting um, where they mentioned that one of either the NIH or the NSF, their kind of uh, funding platform was going to start requiring ORCIDs. It's free. Um, it's very easy to sign up and set up for yourself. Uh, it's just uh, an extra step sometimes. Um, yeah, so what, I don't know, what things haven't I talked about that you were hoping to, to hear about? Is there anything? Uh, Clayton, uh, Monique here. Um, of the three, platforms you've showed us, you know, which maybe is the easiest to say, add publications to your profile that are not indexed by those platforms? I, that, that's the thing is I don't know, Google Scholar I think is the only one that will actually let you do that. I am not certain that uh, you can actually do that in Scopus or Web of Science. Um, although I'll say it's not something that I have tried to do, mostly because I don't have uh, enough publications to have been able to do it for myself. So um, I would be, I'd be very interested if anybody who's in this meeting right now wanted to send me their profile and something that's not in that profile. And I'd be willing to take a look at it and see if I could figure it out. Um, I just don't know if it's possible. 
I, I think that what frustrates people in disciplines like you know social work, sociology, urban planning is they usually find some of their publications tracked and included in Web of Science and Scopus, but not all of their publications. Yeah. And and they you know their the citation counter H index was is not really does not is not as thorough as their body of work. Yeah, I mean, well, it's just it's incorrect, you know. But yeah, and I, I I'm not sure. I think it is just because that those disciplines are traditionally outside of the focus of web of science, certainly. But Scopus, I, I believe, was started as more of a medical related database. I could be wrong, but I think it was it was medicine or health science related. And so, um, you know, to a certain extent, that's not surprising because it was really the sciences that kind of kickstarted this whole, um, well, I don't want to say obsession, but, you know, really valuing citation counts and those uh, personal author metrics and things like that. Um, and so it's been a, more of a slow spread to other disciplines in terms of services offered, maybe less so. It's more of a quicker spread in terms of expectations from your departments and uh, your subject areas. Um, but yeah, it's very, very hit and miss discipline wise what they include and what they don't. So like I said, I would be curious to see if it's possible to add things manually. Would anybody else like to jump in with a question for Clayton? I have a question. Yeah. Um, and thanks for this presentation. Um, I was I was also wondering, you know, there's there seem to be an endless number of other websites where you can create scholar profiles, um, and different ones have either come across my desk or been recommended to me. So I didn't know maybe this is more of like a strategy question or, or how, to re, um, how to relate beyond these three databases um, with, with those scholar profiles in your experience? Um, well, I mean, that's a very good question. And I know that the like, popularity of things like ResearchGate and academia.edu, I think is the other big one at least. Um, I don't know how hooked into them those things are, are ever going to be. I think one of the, um, you know, especially get Scopus and Web of Science um, want, I think, to like keep the, these services behind the paywall that, that the institution has to pay for them. So I'm not sure how much they're ever going to buy into, um, like hooking into author profiles on the kind of social academic sites. Um, I don't, and I also, I also, so I will be honest that I think I, I set up a, a ResearchGate profile once just to see what it was like, but I kind of haven't really done anything with it since then. Um, I believe that there might be some integration with ORCID in those, but I'm not sure. ORCID might be trying to, to kind of make its own kind of scholarly network. Uh, like thing. Um, that, has, that has kind of been my impression as well, that they're trying to do that in with maybe a more uh, uh, legitimate sort of veneer than, sort of, than some of the, uh, um, the other scholarly publishing or the scholarly social sites. Um, but yeah, I mean, I really, I don't know that I have a good answer for how to navigate those things. It's kind of, um, I haven't been, I haven't, I'm not aware of any way to kind of automatically uh, bring those, bring your citations from one service into another very easily, at least. Yeah, sorry, sorry, I don't have a better answer for you. No, that's fine. I just wanted your perspective. I don't, I don't necessarily know if there's a right answer. So I'm, I'm just very curious what people think is a good idea. Yeah, uh, well, and so the, the, the social kind of like scholarly social sites are a really, really tough topic to, to dig into. Um, they are, 
I, I think that the librarians tend to dislike them. I'm speaking for myself. I don't want to speak for anybody else on the call. Uh, we tend to dislike them uh, partially because they encourage they encourage faculty to infringe copyright without knowing it and place themselves at risk of uh, getting uh, their, the publishers angry with them because it's very easy to share your published papers on these sites. Um, that's kind of what they're designed for to a certain extent. And there are cases of publishers, um, you know, asking authors to take down their publications from those sites because uh, they don't have the, the, because that isn't allowed under the conditions of the uh, copyright agreement that they sign. Um, but I think that we kind of also accept the ubiquity of these sites as well, and, and that they are seen as and used as a very um, as, a, as a way of connecting with colleagues and, and finding potential research partners and, and things like that. Growing your scholarly network, I guess, would be a good way of putting it. So um, I don't know. It's an odd balance to take. It, it feels like if you, um, if you want to, if, the, if you feel like it is uh, being, what's the right way to say this? Um, if it feels like the right thing to do in your discipline to, uh, to sign up for one of those, um, you know, I don't think there's a, certainly nothing wrong with it. Um, I think you just want to be aware of any pitfalls there might be in terms of sharing actual publications on those sites. Um, like, you know, if, if all you're doing is going on there and, and listing publications without making them available to download, there's absolutely no problem with that. It's only when the downloads start happening that um, you might run into issues. Um, and that's something that uh, I've talked to, to faculty and, and students with in the past, um, something that I know other librarians have as well. So there's some more context. It's something that I thought about um, a bit as well. So uh, that's why I, I give a long-winded answer. That's helpful, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, thanks, Clay. I, I like how you put it uh, there. It make, make determinations perhaps about what feels right to you and what speaks to you from the discipline that you, that, you, know, that you operate in. Yeah. Um, I also think that you know the title of, of your presentation was about managing your research or impact. And I'm just seeing even though we have such great tools and pay for such great tools and use these things frequently, a lot is left on the researcher to manage them to manage it themselves. Yeah. You know? yeah. I think it's a, it's surprising how much is still like you have to manually go in and do yourself really. Um, but but that is currently the way things are. And I don't, well, I don't know if there will ever be, ever be a good way to have things com managed completely um, automatically. Or, or I think that well, that would like require the, like a whole new department on campus, like some, some campus department to only manage the scholarly profiles of researchers there. And that might bring up a whole other set of issues. Um, yeah, so I don't know if there were any other questions, I'm happy to answer them, but um, here I thought we weren't gonna go a full, even 45 minutes and I've been proved wrong. If there are any final questions, please do not hold back. Well, thank you, Clayton. Thank you for demonstrating these um, these three tools that, as you pointed out, are all available from library.wayne.edu, and that is the best way to usually get to them. Mm -hmm. uh, you've shown us how to navigate the sites, um, really get down into your own researcher profile, and how to log in if you are the researcher or if you're not, and given us some advice about um, why we people might want to get more involved with managing their own personal researcher profile, if not on all of those, maybe at least on one. So again, thank, thank you for the presentation and thanks to all for joining us uh, for our latest installment of the library workshop series every Thursday at 12. <laughs> thanks, Clayton. I will stop the recording now. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thanks for coming. Okay.